Hey guys, Coach Sahil here from TumblingCoach.com and Cheercore, and today we're going to be talking about the six different ways to start your running tumbling pass for more speed and power development. Okay, so before we get started, I just want to let you know that we're going to be rating this approaches from the easiest to the hardest, okay? So we're going to start with the easiest approach first, okay? So that's something that you should be working on. And then if you want to challenge yourself, you can go down the ladder. Um, I suggest trying to do all six. Um, now, generally speaking, if you don't have anything out of a round off, so for example, if you don't have a round of back handspring or any other skill, you can still uh, use these techniques, okay? Because it's going to make your round off faster and more powerful so that when you do get a round of handspring, round of handspring tuck, uh, you can use that and it'll be more beneficial for you. All right, so the first way to start your running tumbling pass from a round off is obviously something you've always done. It's called the two-step approach, okay? Um, and this is obviously the easiest because it gives you the most momentum to go into your pass, okay? If you guys have read my article called The Three Laws uh, of Tumbling, you know that one of the laws says that a tumbling pass in motion likes to stay in motion. So how do you develop that motion? Well, you run into it, okay? Um, the key thing to remember for the two-step, even though you've done it all the time, is especially if you're a coach, is that you want to start on the leg that you round off, okay? So for example, if you're a lefty, like I'm a lefty, okay, so I round off uh, with my left leg lunge forward. That means if I'm standing with my feet together and I'm running into a pass with two steps, okay, it means I would start on my left leg first. So it would go left, right, and then hurdle. Okay, so the hurdle doesn't really count as a step. Okay, so the two-step approach is the easiest. Um, it's something you should work on to get it fast. Okay, make sure your steps are long and fast. A lot of uh, athletes I see, uh, they're trying to do a two-step approach and they'll take like those baby steps and you're not gonna get the power you want from that. So make sure your steps are long. Um, watch some sprinters and you'll see how their strides are really, really long, okay? Um, and the other key for the two-step uh, approach is that you want to start um, explosively, okay? If somebody just looks at you from the side and they just watch you tumble, um, it should look like you ran like you know, 10 feet and they're just watching the last two steps of your run. That's how fast you have to start, okay? It shouldn't be like you start the run slow and then finally it's a two good step. It's two steps right from the go and then you put everything else you have into it, okay? So you're gonna see an example of this right now. Okay, so the second way to go into your running tumbling pass um, which is a little bit harder than the run is obviously the power hurdle, right? So that's when you have your feet together, you swing, you jump with feet together into your pass and then you do whatever you gotta do, okay? Um, obviously it's a little bit harder because it doesn't have the initial momentum from the run. Um, I know a lot of programs do the power hurdle so I don't have to, I don't have to talk too much about it, um, but one thing I recommend is that once you have got your passes nailed down from the two-step run, now, for example, you know, it's a round of handspring tuck, right? And you're getting it down pat and the two-step approach is good, feels easy and solid, uh, step it back to the power hurdle, okay? Um, the other thing with the power hurdle is that it's a really useful approach uh, when you have safety surfaces. So a safety surface is anything that's not a floor. So for example, air tracks, like we have over here at your core. Um, if you have a tumble track, that's awesome, trampoline, whatever you got, anything that's soft and forgiving is a safety surface. When you're tumbling on a safety surface, generally speaking, don't do the two-step, okay? I, I tell all my athletes that they have to start from the power hurdle minimum, especially when they're on the air track. I generally don't let them run unless they're doing very advanced skills like whip doubles or whip fulls and things like that. Then they need that little bit of extra momentum, but things like round of handspring tucks or round of double handsprings or even layouts and things like that, generally speaking, it's a power hurdle start, so give that a shot. All right, so now the third way to start your running tumbling pass is something called the opposite hurdle. Now this is something you may not have done. Um, if you've seen some of my drills, then maybe you have seen it. Um, it's, a, it's a technique I developed to generate power okay, and, and help athletes generate a lot of power and leg strength. Um, I, by, I did it by watching sprinters. Okay? So if you watch sprinters, how they start is they start you know, with the, the chest down, the arms in that position, their legs are back, and then they explode into it. Well, they found out that that's 
um, actually the most efficient way for a human to go from zero to whatever, right? To pick up speed from nothing. Um, that's generally the fastest way to do it. Now, now obviously we don't have those things uh, into the floor. I don't even know what they're called, but you know those uh, little foot rests where you can kind of push off and, and get that extra momentum? We don't have that, right? We have to just go from where we are. So I developed this called the opposite hurdle. Basically what that, the reason it's called the opposite hurdle is you take the opposite leg uh, that you round off with. So again, I'm a lefty, so I would have my right leg in front of me, okay, and I'd be in a low lunge. Now you don't want to do the lunge like on my shaping poster, okay? You don't want that back leg straight. Okay, what you want to do is a lunge that helps you accelerate. So you're kind of in a lunge where the back knee is a little bit bent, okay, as if like you're starting like a sprinter, okay? And then your arms are behind you, and what you do is you swing into it, and you drive your round off knee in front, hitting that passe shape, and then you go into your pass, okay? And again, if you're having a hard time visualizing what that looks like, um, I, I'm gonna put up a video in a second, maybe it'll pop up, or I'll, I'll put up a whole different clip. But the opposite hurdle is a great stepping stone. Um, and again, it's one of those steps that, if you can do, it, if you can do your pass from the two-step, and if you can do your pass from the power hurdle, then the next thing you wanna do is you, you wanna try it from the opposite hurdle. Um, the other reason I like it, it's very consistent, right? Um, when you do the two-step run, um, some athletes, you know, will change their passes. So for example, you know, we use meter marks over here. So one meter, two meter, things like that. So let's say an athlete is going, you know, two-step from eight meters. They're going two-step, round of back handspring, and it fits, right? Um, and then sometimes what happens, that'll change. So they'll take, I don't know, their steps will be small or the steps will be long. So now that their marks change, right? Generally, we don't want that, but that happens. Same thing with the power hurdle, right? You start the class, you have an explosive power hurdle, so your mark is good, and then you get tired, so your jumps get weaker, and then all of a sudden, now it's like you're missing your mark, right? Uh, the good thing about the opposite hurdle, generally speaking, even when you're a little bit tired, your mark tends to stay the same. So it's a great tool to use, not only on floor, but on safety surfaces, so that if you're trying skills, you don't have to stress about like, oh, am I gonna hit the edge, or, or something gonna happen, okay? Um, so give that a shot. Try it out. It's a little tricky at first, but I think if you practice it, you'll get it, and I think you'll uh, you'll enjoy it. Okay, so the fourth way to go into your running tumbling pass is called the passe hop. Okay. Now, before I go into it, um, if you found the other three approaches useful um, and you and you're gonna try them out, uh, drop it in the comment section below uh, which one you're gonna use so far. And also, don't forget to subscribe uh, to the channel as I release more content. So please go do that now. And let's talk about that fourth approach, which is the passe hop. Okay. Now, I'll be honest. I came up with this just for fun. So one day we were just kind of goofing around. Um, I wanted to challenge my athletes a little bit. And so you know, the the, the normal approaches like I just talked about, we did it. Um, so I wanted to see if they can really push themselves. So I just came up with the passe hop, okay? Um, and you'll see the video coming up in a second. But basically, you're in your passe position. Again, if you have my shaping posters, if you've been to my clinics, you know what that position is, or if you're from dance, okay? So basically, your round off knee is up, okay? Right, right, right just like this, and your, your arms are up here. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna swing your two arms and that one knee behind you. So when you're here, you're gonna swing the arm and the knee behind you, and then you're gonna hop off the leg and leap into your round off, and then do whatever you gotta do, okay? Really, really great for power development because it forces you to have an aggressive needle kick, okay? And also helps you drive that knee up. So if you see any good running tumblers, um, as they're running into it and they go into the round out, their knee comes up so they can get that long, uh, nice lunge that you need. So if you have short lunges, or if you're a coach and your athlete has a really short lunge, this is something you might wanna play around with. Again, watch the video to kinda of see what I mean. Okay, so the fifth way to start your running tumbling pass, okay? This one is very similar to number four, it's called the passe fall, okay? So again, as I said, we're getting harder and harder, so this is the fifth hardest one. Um, basically, you're just in your passe position. Um, generally, by the way, you wanna do this from an incline, so you wanna have the athlete like on a cheese mat, so then they fall um, into it, and then they can do whatever they gotta do. I use this a lot, not only when my athletes are advanced, but also as a basic drill, so for example, if an athlete is just learning a round of back handspring and they're new to it, um, I want to give them power but not too much, right? They want to have a little bit of control. So what I'll do is I'll have them start on a cheese mat, they'll be in a passe position, and the cheese mat will be set up so when that round off lands and they go for the handspring, the handspring happens into a pit, right? So they're here, they go fall from the passe, round off, back handspring, into the pit. Right? And then when they get comfortable from that, then you actually go up the ladder, right? So then you go passe hop and then power hurdle and things like that, right? But again, this is a good challenge for those who already have their passes. 
Um, you know, you can do everything from tucks to layouts. Um, if an athlete is feeling really brave and you know they got lots of power, um, you can even try fulls from it or try an air track. So I'm gonna put up the video really quick, but yeah, all it is, it's basically a gravity assist, right? So there's no actual, you're not actually getting any momentum out of it. Um, all the power comes from that needle kick again. Okay, that's where that key is, the needle kick snap down. Um, there's basically, if you don't do, if you don't have a good needle kick and you don't have a good snap down, it's gonna be near impossible to do a, a running tumbling pass from this approach. So uh, caution, right? So don't, don't make, sh make sure you're newbie athletes or if you're a newbie athlete, don't be like, oh, I'm just gonna try it. Be careful, try it on a safety surface. But if you can do it and you have the opportunity, give it a shot because it's hard and it's fun and it'll really make a difference uh, in your running tumbling. All right, so number six, the sixth way to approach your running tumbling pass, okay? This is one of the ones that uh, nobody really likes. Like my athletes don't really like it, uh, haven't really come across anybody who likes it. Now sometimes like it's kind of fun, but it, it, the reason for that is number six, so it's actually very, very challenging, and that's the kneeling round off approach, okay? Um, again, it's one of those things, that the reason it's not liked is because it's hard to develop power from. So that because it's hard, generally athletes uh, don't like it. As a coach, I love it because again, it really forces, it does two things actually. Um, not only do you need a good needle kick, but that front leg, because you're kneeling and you have to stand up out of it, it's like doing a, a mini lunge, an explosive lunge. So again, if you have some of my conditioning posters, you know how we do the jumping lunges. Well, it's like kind of like doing a jumping lunge plus passe needle kick into your skill. So it's like, that's why it, it, it's very tiring, right? So obviously you don't wanna do it over and over again. Um, a kneeling round off handspring tuck is not a conditioning tool as much as it is just to train a couple times to get the feel for the power development. So for example, um, you get an athlete to try a kneeling round back handspring tuck, okay? Uh, and you can kind of let them feel it out. Then you say, okay, can you make that faster, right? So they try it again two or three times. As soon as they're kneeling round of handspring is faster, you stop. You say, okay, now that you felt what it's like, because if they got faster, generally they're doing a lot of work to make that happen, because again, it is very hard. So as soon as they're faster, then you take them back to your original approach, whether it's the power hurdle, the two step or whatever, and then see if that pass got faster, because it's more of a tool. And if it did, great. And if it didn't, you just go back to it. But don't throw in sets of 10 to 15, you know, kneeling round off tucks. Um, it, I mean, you can if you want to, but I don't recommend it. There are better and safer ways to condition. Um, I think conditioning while doing tumbling passes, so things that make you tired while you're doing tumbling and make you tired again, is not really good, right? You're compromising safety at that point. You always wanna tumble uh, as fresh as possible, but then you wanna condition separately to get stronger, okay? So I hope that makes sense. Um, I hope these six approaches, uh, six ways to go into your running tumbling pass were helpful. If you have any questions, I'd love to answer them. Just drop in the comment section below. And if you have another way to start a running tumbling pass, um, I would love to hear about it. Just throw it in the comment section below and I'll take a look. Oh, by the way, I forgot to mention, um, if you want to know when these videos are released, okay, be sure to subscribe to my channel, but also sign up for my Tumbling Tips newsletter. Uh, the link is gonna pop up somewhere. Basically what you do is um, you'll get a notification, like when I upload a video to YouTube, you're gonna get a notification, but what I do generally speaking is I, and when I release new content, um, I actually release it unlisted first. Um, so that my newsletter subscribers actually get the first view for it. And then uh, usually a day later or, or 24 hours or 12 hours later, I make it public. So if you wanna be the first one to get your hands on it, um, join, the, join the newsletter. I also release exclusive uh, mailbag content. So basically every time I release a newsletter, I'll answer a question um, that I get sent. Um, I used to be able to answer all the emails that I used to get, but it's getting tough. And the questions are kind of coming the same, right? Like, you know, how do I get my feet together in the back handspring, things like that. So what I've done is I take the most common question, um, I, I make it anonymous so that you don't worry, your name is safe. Um, and, and I make it like a mailbag. So I answer that question so everybody can benefit. So if that interests you, it's completely free by the way, and um, I don't sell your information. So if you want to opt out, you can, but here's the link for it. And I hope you guys sign up. Until next time, Take care.